What's up guys, Redis Reviews, back with you again. I have absolutely been afflicted by a sickness lately in that I have not been able to stop buying firearms for my collection, but some things that I've really been wanting to get have been popping up here and there and I've just been sniping them one at a time. This is a box that I just received from Royal Tiger Imports. This is the second purchase I've made from them. They are the ones that are selling that batch of firearms that was imported by Inner Ordnance from Ethiopia in Africa. Father's Day has just passed, and over Father's Day, Royal Tiger Imports had a 10% discount on all their CNR and antique firearms, and I could not help myself but to capitalize on that 10% discount. That actually helped out quite a bit on this order. It saved about $115 on this order. This is a rather small box compared to the ones I have been opening. However, it is rifle length. I have my M1 Garand bayonet out here, so that alludes to what might be inside. Let's go ahead and cut this thing open and see what we have. This M1 Garand bayonet is unsharpened, by the way. I got the corner open there. Before I get too far into it, I wanted to show you the condition that this box came in. Now, there's no holes or anything in it but it's very flimsy. It's almost like a soft box, which is a little bit concerning. It doesn't really have any structural integrity left to it. I don't know what's up with that. So what do we have here? Well, there's one something wrapped in bubble wrap. Certainly a rifle, but kind of short. I think I know which one this one is, and this is actually gonna be a future video, so stay tuned for that. The subject of this video is gonna be this one right here. So there's two rifles in this box. Get the box out of the way. This, my friends, is an M1 carbine. So recently I've really been focusing on my US collection, trying to really add all of the individual rifle patterns that we've used over the 20th century into my collection. And this is one that I have yet to do so. They put a fair amount of bubble wrap on there, but nothing extreme. World Target Imports didn't do the best job of wrapping my number four that I got from them. If you remember, it did suffer some damage in shipping. The rear sight was broke and one of the handguards was cracked. Hopefully, nothing bad has happened to this one. Let's continue rolling it out here. Now, these rifles have been kept in storage in Africa for years, and so I'm expecting it to be extremely dirty, but hopefully nothing too bad is wrong with it. Look at that. Man, this thing is little. I love the M1 carbine. I've actually never had the opportunity to shoot one. I've always admired them when holding them at gun shows and stuff. They're so lightweight, it's ridiculous. Let's get this bubble wrap out of the way. All right, let's safety check this one just to make sure everything's good. We'll pull the magazine out. This is a standard 15 round magazine. It looks like it's blued and covered in Cosmoline, so it's kind of sticky. And that's marked RO on it. So that would be a period correct magazine. Pull our action back here. And our chamber is clear. Well, on first glance, I'm thinking this thing looks really good. Let's see what we actually have here. Looks like it's an inland serial number 5,300,000 US carbine caliber 30 M1. This does have the updated sights. This is not one of their early M1s. Those were a little bit out of my price range. And wow, I'm actually really impressed by the external condition. This thing is looking good. Let's check out this barrel. Looks like we have an inland barrel on it. Inland manufacturing, division, General Motors, six. So that's June, 1944. So it has original June, 1944, World War II barrel on it, which is pretty cool because my M1 Garand is a 44 and my number four Mark I rifle is a 44. There's our import mark. It kind of just blends in, so it's actually not too bad. I like them being up here on the muzzle end as opposed to being on the receiver. I think they're pretty ugly on the receiver, but not too bad over here. It does say IO Inc. M1 carbine. We have a bayonet lug. Front sight looks good with those protective wings. Front sling loop looks nice. We have a little gouge out of the stock here. That's the worst spot I've seen on it so far. The weight on this is just freaking amazing. It is so lightweight. I wish we would have one of these when I was a kid. I'd have probably shot the crap out of it. Let's check for markings on the stock. There's a C marking here on the wrist. There's a P marking on the bottom of the semi-pistol grip. There's the butt plate. And the wood is just looking so good. I'll have to try to find me a period correct sling for it. The action actually seems nice and smooth. Considering the condition they've been stored in, this one is surprisingly clean looking from what I can see so far. Safety catch seems to be operational as we saw before. The magazine release is functional. There's another little nick out of the bottom of the stock there. In overall condition, I'd say this is probably very good condition. Overall weight on an M1 is about 5.2 pounds. 
Standard magazine capacity is a 15 round box magazine. As we said before, these also come in 30 round varieties. Overall length is pretty short, 35.6 inches. Barrel length is 18 inches. That allows the 30 carbine projectile to leave the muzzle at about 2,000 feet a second, giving it about twice the muzzle energy of a 45. The M1 carbine entered US service in 1942, and it remained in active service in some form until 1973. 6.1 million of these were produced. That's the most of any small arm that the US produced during World War II. More than the M1 Grand, more than the Thompson, more than the 1911. By the US, they were used, of course, in World War II. They saw extensive use in Korea, and they even saw limited use in Vietnam, especially the early parts of that conflict. The US gave away tons of these to other countries as military aid, including Korea, the South Vietnamese. The M1 carbine can still be seen in use in some parts of the world today. It has popped up in numerous conflicts globally and is really just a super cool special troops weapon. It was meant to bridge the gap between the pistol and the full-size rifle. It was never supposed to take the place of the M1 Garand. It was meant to take the place of a handgun, essentially. And in a combat role, a rifle like this is far more effective than a handgun. The reliability of the M1 carbine has always been questionable. Rumors have always been out there that, oh, they're unreliable, or, you know, I wouldn't trust my life to one. There's even that old tale that the projectile didn't have enough energy to penetrate the North Koreans' winter jacket during the Korean War. I think that's been proven that it most definitely can. As far as reliability goes, yeah, they seem to be hit and miss. The commercial versions of the M1 carbine, especially the ones that came out post-war with cast receivers, are especially notorious for being unreliable. In general, your actual GI models should be fairly reliable but we won't know until we get it out to the range. Let's go ahead and check that bore out. I'll be inserting a picture of that right here. And I noticed something a little odd down here in the bottom of the butt stock as I was glancing at the rifle, and that's that there's a little bit of mold growing on the stock. So I'm gonna get in there with some ballastol and scrub that out. That should take care of that quite easily. But heck yeah, I really couldn't be happier. I'm, I'm glad I went ahead and pulled the trigger and bought this one. They had several options for the M1 carbines on their website. This one was supposed to be good to very good condition, and that was gonna be an inland only. If you want a different manufacturer, you can choose a random draw on their website. You can get one from any of the various manufacturers of the M1 carbine. There was quite a few. I think you can also call Royal Tiger Imports up if you want something specific and request it, but I'm not sure about that. You'd have to talk to them. It's 4th of July weekend, and I'm going to do everything in my power to get this 100% cleaned up and checked out and try to get it out to the range this weekend. Hopefully, you've seen some shooting footage in this video already. Well, guys, that was the video. Another U.S. rifle knocked off my list. U.S. carbine caliber 30 by the Inland Division of General Motors, 1944. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel because I'll have more firearms content and related things coming out in the future. And we will catch you in the next video. See you then. Peace.